everybody. Welcome to Stories and Art for Children. Here we are at ACMI studio, and my name is Peggy, and this is Little Bear. And Little Bear is very excited about the story we have today. Do you know what it is, Little Bear? No, what is it? Well, it's about butterflies. Do you know what butterflies are? Well, yeah, they have these little guys that fly around with floppy wings. Yeah, like, like I've got one right here, just a little picture of one. This is a butterfly. Oh, yeah, that's what they look like. Well, we're going to have a story today, a darling story that was written by a woman in Germany. And it's about the story of the butterfly children. They're not children. No, I know, but she, she has a wonderful imagination. She turned butterflies into little children. Oh, that must be cute. Well, you know what's really amazing about butterflies? When they're growing, they don't start out as butterflies. There's a little cycle that they go through. Like what? Well, first there's the butterfly, and then the butterfly lays little eggs on leaves. Can you see it right there? Oh, yeah, right there? Mm-hmm, right there. And then they stay there for a while, oh, for about four, eight days, and you know what happens then? What? So then, out of the eggs comes tiny little caterpillars. You're kidding. No, nope. see, right there, right there. Oh, that's really great. Then what happens? Well, after that, then they start coming out of the, the place that they're in, and they hang on the tree, and they hang upside down, like right over here. And it's called a pupa, or a chrysalis. Oh. And you're going to hear that name in the story. Keep listening, all right? Yes. And then what? Well, then, after that, they, the little caterpillar stays inside there, it becomes a butterfly. Oh, <gasps> that's wonderful. Well, you're going to kind of hear about this in the story. I can't wait. And then, you know what? Afterwards, everything isn't going to end. How come? Well, afterwards, we are going to go to a very special place. We're going to take you on Spy Pond. And when the story is over, I'll tell you more about it because there are fairies hanging on the trees. But not butterfly kids? No, not the butterfly children. But it kind of keeps you in the same feeling. Oh, I think I'm going to like it. Yeah, I do too. So would you sit over here, please, while I read the story? Sure. Okay, you're always such a good bear. You are. The story of the butterfly children. See them floating in the air, looking at each other? And it was written by a German woman. Let's go to the first page. Okay. Here we are, the butterfly children. Far, far away from here in the magical butterfly kingdom live the brilliant and joyful butterfly folk. The little butterfly children are called crystallids. Together they play merrily in the beautiful gardens. The gentle butterfly folk watch over the crystallids as they play and share all they know about the garden's lush plants and brightly colored flowers. The butterfly children are very happy in such fine gardens to play in. How lucky they are. The butterfly children love to play with their friends in these beautiful gardens. Here they are. The butterfly children's baby brothers and sisters are called caterpillars. Their nursery is in the green meadow of the butterfly kingdom where mother silk moth and Mama Swallowtail take care of the little caterpillars. They spin their new gowns for the babies and make sure they have green leaf juice to drink. When they get sleepy, the caterpillars nap in silken hammocks that swing gently between the trees. Is that not cute? See the little babies? They're sipping on the juice. The little caterpillars want to explore their meadow nursery but they can't crawl far. They can't. Not yet. They're still babies. Every afternoon, the butterfly children go to Madame Dragonfly's dancing school. 
They learn how to dance among the flowers and balance on thin stalks and grasses. Madam Dragonfly takes their hand and helps them to practice. One day, they will all be as graceful and as elegant as she is. Oh dear, the chrysalids sometimes take a tumble on the soft grass, but soon they, they find out how to get up again. First day of spring is a very special day. The sun sends his messengers, the sunbeams, down to the butterfly kingdom, and they present the chrysalids with their new wings. How noble the sunbeams look in their golden robes and how brightly their golden lances shimmer. Look at them right here. So much fun. The chrysalids gather around the sunbeams. They can't wait to get their new wings. Little bear, what do you think they're going to do? Oh, probably fly. Yep, I think they are. The cabbage white and brimstone butterflies are first to get their wings. They have learned all about the flowers and plants and how to dance and weave among the stalks and grasses. Now they're ready to fly out on their own. Together, the butterfly children flutter happily over the green meadows. And here they go. Higher and higher, the butterfly children fly through the mild spring air, testing out their new wings. Soon, all the other butterfly children get their wings and follow their friends into the air. They're not chrysalis any longer. They've become beautiful butterflies. The sky is so full of color as peacock, swallowtail, tortoiseshell, red admirable, and many other butterflies dance and flutter all around. The butterfly children stop to rest on the soft white flowers. They sit there a while. And these little guys can just hang in the air and talk to each other. It's like magic. When nighttime comes, the moths have a long torchlight procession to celebrate the special day. They've received their wings too. The butterflies are all invited and the ones that have not already gone to bed join the moths and dance through the air with them. Oh, what a sight it is. The butterflies and the moths sing songs to welcome springtime and give thanks for their wings. The meadow flowers snoozing by the wayside are woken up by the gentle wing beats. They curl inside their petals and listen to the songs. And if you listen very carefully, you may hear them singing. That's on the first day of spring. You might hear the butterflies and the moths singing as they celebrate their new wings and they're able to fly all around and take care of nature. The end. That is the end of this story, but it's not the end of what your adventure might be. Remember I told you that we're going to take you to the pond, spy pond, and take you to where there are lots of fairies. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them right now. So little bear, guess what this is? I have no idea. Well, this is a stick fairy, and there are lots of fairies, a beautiful display on Spy Pond. Well, yeah, is she going to be there? Well, she'll be there, and there's a tree that has this display of fairies. They're big ones and little ones, but not quite as big as this one. Like, they're little teeny ones like this that are so cute. And they're just hanging on the tree, and you can see them. They're little baby fairies. And then there's a box on the tree where you can leave notes to the fairy. And guess what the kids put on the notes? What? Well, they put their wishes and their dreams and things that they would love to have come true. And they put their little notes in the box. Oh, that's kind of fun. Yep. And right across from the fairy tree is a place where kids bring animals and they make little houses for them. There's an animal shelter, a fairy animal shelter. Does that sound like fun? Yes, I love it. How do the kids get there? Well, if they're driving from Mass Ave, their moms are, they just take Mass Ave, then they take a right at Linwood Road, 
right down to the lake. And then they get out of their cars and they start taking a right to a tree right along the bike path. And they'll see it, it's easy to find. It's across from the ballpark and then they can go down and play at the new playground. Oh, that sounds great, so much fun. Can I sniff those flowers? Yeah, you can. Oh, they don't smell like flowers. I know, I just made them. This is a flower fairy that I made just so people can think, oh, there's good things ahead, let's go. Mom, let's go see the fairies. So you guys, on one nice hot day or any day, go down to the tree. You're going to love it. And thanks for listening today. We had a good time, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Hi, everybody. Here we are on Spy Pond, and we're going to visit the fairy tree that's loaded with fairies and elves. What do you think, little bear? Oh, really? Yes, lots of them want to see them. All you have to do is turn around and look. Oh, oh, look. They look so real. They look happy. I bet they make people look happy. Yes, want to go closer? Yes, I do, I do. Who's this guy? This is a little elf. See him up there? Oh, he looks so real. He looks really happy and peaceful. Who lives in here? Well, there's nothing in there, but it, it's kind of like a little birdhouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see the bird. He's up there. Yep, he's right there. Little bear, do you like this? Yes, show me more. Okay, so right here is a little fairy or a little elf and just sleeping. What's this box? Let's knock and see. Nope, there's nobody inside, but you know what? The fairies have asked everybody to leave messages so that they know that they're talking back and forth and they can help their dreams come true. What a great idea. What does it say? It says, somebody wrote this. You are so beautiful, fairies and elves, and I believe in you. Oh, nice. What else? Well, it says, oh, I want a puppy this summer. Oh puppy? Yes, and the little child said that they want a puppy and they're going to believe that the fairies makes their dream come true. Oh, that's really nice. I hope you get a puppy. Show me some more things. Okay, let's go over here. This is something somebody left, a sweet little angel hanging here. That's so pretty. And those flowers somebody left. Who are the somebodies? Well, they're people who walk by and the fairies have said on the box, please leave treasures for the fairies so that they know that they think that they're real. And they leave little treasures like this little butterfly and this darling little earring. Oh, I think that's really nice. Do they leave other things? Yep, they do. And here's some little stones that people left and a little Bambi and they make all kinds of little contributions. There's some little glass and then over here on the ground all kinds of toys that kids left. Oh, that's really nice. I like that idea. And then on the side of the tree, there's another little elf that's riding on an owl. Oh, so cool. I love it. Now, who made these fairies? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you a little secret. I made the fairies. You did? Yes, I did. Then that means they're not real. No, but little bear, they're not supposed to be real. They're just supposed to make people imagine that they're real and think of their childhoods and, and times that they've read about fairies and elves. And then all of a sudden they come to life on a tree. Oh, okay. I get it. That, that's really nice. That's nice. I got to think about that for a while. Okay. But you know what? There are more things having to do fairies right across from this tree. Really? Yes. It's a fairy shelter for animals. And there are all kinds of little cute animals, little stuffed ones and things people have left. Oh, let's go over. Come on, come on. Okay, we're going to go right over. Fairy shelter right under the trees. Here we go. Little bear. Guess what? We're right here at the animal shelter. The fairy animal shelter. Oh, I love it. Look at all the little guys here. Yep, over there. A little bear 
and a little dog and a bunny. And who's that guy? He's Mr. Humperdinck. And he keeps a watch over everything. And he doesn't let anything happen during the day or the night. Oh, I like him. He looks like a good guy. Yes, he is a good guy. But he just makes sure that everything is just really nice here for the fairies. What are those things? Those are little houses, fairy houses. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, they make things out of natural things in the woods. They can make teepees and tents and all kinds of things. You're right. People could do this in their own backyards. Why don't they? Well, I don't know. But I wish they would after seeing it. And then look, you can make all kinds of designs. Like on the ground with sticks. Oh, that's a funny nut thing. No, that's a nut right in the middle. All kinds of things happen here. It's just so cute. And I love coming every day. And I'll bring you because there are new things that show up. And you know what? There's one more place I want to take you. It's farther down on the bike path. And it's a fairy garden. But it's not quite like this. Are you ready to go? Can you do it? Yeah, I can. I can. Let's go. way and look at all these wonderful things. Well, I don't really see any fairies. Well, I'm not sure if this is a fairy garden or just an earthy garden that the fairies would love. But here's kind of a fairy right there. See her? With the feathers? Somebody put those on after I made her. Oh, they're just beautiful. Yep, and you know what else? Down here are all kinds of little things that I made out of chips of wood that came out of the woods right here. And there are little animals, and there are little bugs, and there's a little guy over there. Oh, that's really cool. And you see this little guy? That's a bug with a proboscis. What's that? It's like his nose. It's a big, long nose that comes out like this. And that's where he goes and he collects things. Oh, this is really nice. I like it. Well, what did the people do over there? Well, right here, there's a little basket. And then there's a sign and it encourages people to come and weave and just weave in the woods and then come sit and be quiet and listen to the birds and be peaceful. And so all these little strings and I left a ball of yarn have been woven into all these sticks that I set up. Oh, I love it. It's kind of wild. Yes, it is, but it's free and wild. And that's what I wanted people to just feel, that they could feel this feeling in the wilderness. And then do you see this little guy? This little guy is the farmer that watches over everything. And he keeps everything all safe. And he waters the little plants. And he watches the little things blow in the wind. And everything just stays there. Oh, I love it. It makes me feel very peaceful. Yep. It's a peaceful place to play in the woods. And then what's this? Well, this is like a little pretend place where you cook things, like little beetles and bugs or something like that. Cook up food for them. Oh, that's really cute. Who made that? I did. I love making things like this. And I want people to pick up sticks, pick up bark, and make all kinds of things like this. Over here, I'm going to show you, is a xylophone I made. What's that? Well, it's a musical instrument that you hit it and it makes sounds. And this is like a silent xylophone that the wind plays on. Oh, that's really nice. And then down here I started making a structure with sticks and I hope people will come and keep filling it out and then bring it all the way down here. Oh, I hope they do too. So let's tell the people to come here. Okay, so everybody that's seen the secret garden, be sure to come to Spy Pond. Come along the bike path. There's a place to park, a place to walk, a place to ride your bike, and to come just sit and weave in the woods and imagine being one with nature. Yes, one with nature. That's what I am. I know you're just an old nature boy. No, I'm not old. No, a young, young, young nature boy. You're too cute. Okay, everybody, be sure to stop by. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you next time.